After spending a few weeks looking at bike upgrades that could save you just a few watts for over a thousand dollars, how about we bring things back to reality and look at an upgrade that costs just 30 bucks and can save you 12 watts on race day. That's right, if you hadn't guessed from the thumbnail of this video, I'm talking about latex tubes. That's right, us triathletes don't just enjoy tight-fitting clothing, we also have a good time with some latex. Let's get into it. A quick bike lesson for those of you that are unfamiliar. A lot of people get confused between your tubes and the tires, and they're not the same thing in most cases. So the tire is actually the thing that's rolling along the ground, and that's, that's this outside piece here. Then your tube is actually what's inside the tire, and this is what's holding the air pressure when you pump up your tires. So if you get a flat, this is what's gone flat. Now, there's also uh, a tubeless system, which as the name suggests, means that you don't have an inner tube. So if that's you, stop watching this video. It doesn't apply to you. Come back next week because we're talking about the tires next week. But for this video, I'm only talking about people that have the, the clincher setups, which means you have a tire and a tube. Now when most people hear bike tube, they think of these. This is your standard butyl tube. It's a, butyl is the compound that this is made of. And 99.999% of people use these. And for everything other than race day, this is great. It's cheap, it's, you know, it's easy to use. These are, these are great. And if you go to a bike shop and you ask for a tube, this is what they're gonna sell you. But for race day, for, for when you care about going fast and performance, this is not what you want. This is a latex tube. It's made of latex. Uh, as you could guess, it's much lighter. Uh, so for all you weight weenies out there, it's a little bit lighter. Um, and it's much more flexible. And the flexibility is the thing that we really like about these latex tubes. This tube is from Vittoria, and Vittoria will tell you that their tubes will save you five watts per wheel on race day. Now, two wheels, so that's, that's a 10 watt savings. But that's their marketing claim. And we don't really look at marketing claims here. We like to look at independent data. So let's go find some independent data and see what it says. Back in 2016, Cycling Weekly did their own independent testing with butyl and latex tubes and found 5.5 watts of savings per wheel over the standard butyl tube. So that's 11 watts, which more than 10. Looking for something more recent, we actually can use AeroCoach. And by the way, if you haven't heard of AeroCoach and you're a cycling nerd and you like the data and stuff, I'll link them down below. They're awesome. They got some really cool stuff going on. But anyways, they did the test. They actually looked at several tubes and comparing the latex tube with the standard butyl tube, they found over seven watts of savings per tube. 14 watts of savings on a bike. So Vittoria is actually under-reporting their watt savings, which does seem a little, I don't know. It's just not, it doesn't seem like very good marketing, but either way, it seems that you can save somewhere between 10 to 14 watts by switching from a butyl tube to latex tubes on race day. For me, looking at one of my previous 70.3s using Best Bike Split, I can tell you that like a 12 watt savings over my 70.3 would be almost two and a half minutes. Again, for 30 bucks, like that's crazy. That is an insane amount of time for a very little cost. Now you're probably thinking uh, like I was, well, wait a second, how is it that something that goes inside my tire that doesn't even touch the road, like how is it that that is saving so much? Like what's happening here? Well, it's complicated. It involves a lot of math and big engineering words like hysteresis and coefficient of restitution. And actually, if you wanna dive into the math and the data behind it, I will link an article from Flow Wheels. They do a great job. They're proper engineers, so they can explain it much better than I can. Uh, I'll link them down below. You should just go check that out if you want to like dive into that. But basically, it comes down to the fact that this latex tube it's more flexible. So as the tire rolls along and as it hits bumps and vibrations, this is more flexible and so therefore it just, it has better rolling resistance. 
it rolls better because it's more flexible. Okay, 12 watts of savings for about 30 bucks. Seems sort of too good to be true. And there has to be some downside, right? A latex tube will lose air much faster than the standard butyl tube. And what that means is where you normally would pump up your tires maybe once a week, maybe longer, like it just, they, they hold air for a long period of time. A latex tube, you're gonna be pumping up once um, every few days. So if you, let's say, go to a race and you weren't, you're not gonna be putting air in your tire the night before because by the morning you will have lost five to 10 PSI. Also, they can be a little finicky to set up. When you first install them, you have to make sure that all your spoke holes are well covered, that there's not any gaps between like your rim tape and the spoke hole that the tire could kind of wiggle its way into, or it's not getting pinched between the rim and the tire. Um, because like where a standard butyl tube will just pop out of there because it's a much harder compound, the latex tube will get stuck in there and then that'll cause it to pop as well. So it's a little finicky to set up, but once it's set up, you're fine. Like there's no issues. And honestly, if you don't want to deal with it, just take it to your bike shop. They'll set it up. They'll do all of it for you. And then you won't even have to worry about it. So I don't even really consider that a drawback. Finally, flat protection. Some people will tell you that a latex tube is more likely to get flats. I have never seen any actual data to support that, and I don't agree. I think a latex tube is actually less likely to get flats. And again, it comes back to the fact that it's more flexible. So with your standard butyl tube, this is a very hard compound. And when you put 100 PSI into this thing, this is brittle. Whereas the latex tube is much more flexible. So if it's under pressure and something breaks through the tire, it's more likely that the latex tube will just sort of worm its way around it. It'll just kind of absorb it around the, the tube and it won't actually pop it. Again, I don't have any data to suggest that. That's just my own personal feelings and the feelings that, of people that I've talked to that know a lot more about this stuff than I do. I would tell you that it actually has more flat protection than the standard butyl tube. So looking at the results, again, this is all over the course of a 70.3 bike course and data is coming from bikecalculator.com. But at 150 watts with latex tube, you can expect to save almost five minutes on your race, which is nuts. That's, again, 30 bucks, 30 bucks for five minutes. And 150 watts is where a lot of people are for their 70.3s. So this is a huge savings. Then looking at 200 watts with the latex tube saving 12 watts, you're looking at like three and a half, I think it's like 315, three minutes and 15 seconds at 200 watts, which is still a lot. And then moving up to 250 watts, which I know a lot of people aren't racing 7.3s there, but there are some of you there there's still a big savings at like, it's two minutes and 21 seconds. It's just under two and a half minutes. So, I mean, damn, like <laughs> who, who would not wanna go between two and a half and five minutes faster over their 70.3 for like 30 bucks? I, I do, <laughs> like that is a crazy upgrade. It really seems like latex tubes is one of those unique cases where it's inexpensive, it's highly effective, and there's almost no drawback. It's one of the few no-brainer upgrades that you can make for race day. And that's to not even talk about the tires. Next week we're talking about tires and pairing a high-performing tire with a latex tube can save you even more time on race day. And again, these are all relatively inexpensive upgrades when compared to some of the other things that they try to sell you for your bike. We'll see you next week when we're talking about tires and finding out how much the whole package could save you. We'll see you then. Bye.